Welcome back to part 2 in my tutorial series for the Phoenix A320. These tutorials are designed with the GA pilot in mind and those interested in making the jump to airliners. We'll cover a fair amount of detail but we won't dot every I and cross every T. To put this video into context make sure you've watched part 1 from cold and dark to cruise. Links in the notes below. Welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. We departed Brussels International, Echo Bravo Bravo Romeo, and we're on our way to Geneva, Lima Sierra Golf Golf. At the end of part one, we were at cruise at 31,000 feet. And now, some 30 minutes later, we're approaching our standard terminal arrival and also our top of descent. It's time to start our preparations. For an ILS approach, runway 04. So it's back to our performance page and it's showing us the cruise information. Click next phase, that's our descent, we don't need info there. Next phase again and that'll bring us to the approach page. And here we need to enter the Q&H for Geneva. As demonstrated in part 1 we could do a weather request in the FMGC. As I'm using Simbrief information I can get it straight from the EFB. Wind is 4 knots at 80. Scattered clouds 3200, temperature 16 degrees, and our QH is 1018. I am using live weather. We can now go ahead and enter that information 1018 and temperature 16. On the data shown on the right hand side is the ILS final information. We need to enter the barrow or decision height information. For that I'm heading back to Navigraph. Going to select Geneva, our destination. As explained in part 1 I can have quick access to the charts as I start them. I need the ILS 04 chart. Now I'm looking for decision height for category C which is 1617 according to the chart. So I've now entered that information. Also tells me the transition altitude is 7,000 feet and flaps will be full. Won't have to worry too much about the go-around I hope. Back to our charts and we can see there's a platform altitude of 7,000 feet by Indus and 6,000 feet by Belka. We're nearly at our top of descent. That's a small white line with an arrow on shown on our route. So I'm going to dial in 7,000 feet on the altitude knob and as we've entered a detailed flight plan, the computer should manage the descent adhering to any constraints defined by the star or standard terminal arrival route. The constraints both in altitude and speed are indicated on the FMGC in purple or magenta. That colour means the computer is confident of being able to meet that constraint. If they were amber, it would mean some manual intervention or advice to ATC, whichever was appropriate. And we can see that we'll be slowing to 250 knots by Lurko. We've now started our descent and we can monitor the progress of our descent in conformance with the plan by the movement of the small green dot on the left hand side of the altitude tape. And here we can see it starting to centralise. Once it's centralised it means we're on track. Thrust is now at idle. If we felt we were gaining too much speed on the descent, we could use our spoilers or air brakes, of course. Just checking our progress on the Akito 2 November star. Looks like we're bang on track. Remember, we adjusted our plan. We'll reach Golf Golf 583 and then turn for the ILS. Let's have another quick look at that. We'll be doing a left turn in towards Belka. At that point, I'll lower the altitude to 6,000 feet to make sure that I capture the ILS and the glide slope. And finally, just a quick reminder of the airport, landing runway 04. It's a long runway, so despite my normal long landing, shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll then exit to the right and taxi to the terminal. The autopilot is in manage mode. We've completed our arrival briefing, and now all that remains is for us to monitor our progress. We're now at 23,000 feet and speed to 80 knots indicated. By constantly looking at these two displays you can pick up a wealth of information. Wind direction and speed, distance and bearing to the next waypoint and of course in magenta any constraints that currently exist.
This is a real world route, but landing in Geneva, well it's one of my favourites. Very scenic, particularly the approach to runway 04 as we come in over the mountains. The opposite direction is equally scenic, coming over the lake. Geneva, of course, is a popular destination and the airport, well, it's a very busy one. Just passing 17,000 feet and we'll soon be turning for our downward leg. Speed is slowed to 250 knots, as we've got a number of fairly tight turns ahead, but we've still got quite some distance to go, so plenty of time to slow down when we need to. Now turning onto our downwind leg and approaching 14,000 feet. Although the computer is managing the descent, a lot of high ground around, so we need to be observant and be prepared to step in if we need to. As we're going to bypass Indus and go direct to Belker, just dialing in 6,000 feet. If I'm too high, well, I won't pick up the approach. Not so much an Airbus issue as a SIM issue. Preparations now for landing. Arm the speed brake or spoilers. Approaching 10,000 feet, so landing lights can now come on. Our taxi lights can go to taxi. And I can put on my runway turn lights as well. Seatbelt signs are on. We can now engage both pilot and co-pilot's LS buttons. This will not capture the ILS, but on the primary flight display, it provides both vertical and lateral indications via the magenta symbols. They're not aligned at the moment, but that's to be expected as I'm not on final yet. We've been fortunate today, lovely weather in Geneva. A little bit of low cloud, but other than that, nice and clear. As we took the time prior to our departure to enter all the data accurately with the benefit of using SimBrief, we can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the primary flight display, the Airbus has auto-tuned the ILS frequency, making my job as a pilot so much easier. The information is displayed in magenta. The overall high levels of automation in the Airbus is why it's such a good aircraft to initially try your hand at airliner flying. Inbuilt safety mechanisms means it's fairly forgiving. We're now turning towards final and should pick up the approach shortly. You can see the two magenta symbols on the primary flight display. They're just starting to move and align. Both should be centralized by the time we're on final. Flaps down one notch. Speed just dropping below 220 knots. We've just dropped below the transition altitude, 7,000 feet, so time to set the q &H. It's 1018, set at both sides. The standby altimeter has been set as well. Keep your eye on the magenta symbols on the PFD. They're now starting to align. I've now armed both Autopilot 1 and 2. Autopilot 2 is a backup and I've engaged approach. The glide slope's been captured and the aircraft is now lining up for the ILS, now just dropping below 5,500 feet. With approach engaged, we've now captured the ILS. Landing gear down and watching the lights for 3 green, coming up on 4,500 feet. Speed about 220 knots and dropping. And we have 3 green for the landing gear. Speed now 190 knots and flaps 2. And I have the airport and runway visual dead ahead. We have about 7 nautical miles until touchdown. Flaps 3. Keeping an eye on the auto throttle, decreasing my speed. Flaps now all the way down. Speed's about 137 knots, altitude 3200 and descending. What a lovely approach into Geneva, coming up on 2000 feet.
had the 1000 feet call but I'm going to hold her on the autopilot a little bit longer and thereby providing less opportunity to embarrass myself. Five hundred feet to go. Time to disengage the autopilot. Make sure to use the button on the joystick, not on the console. I have control. Make sure your seat belts are securely fastened and trays in the upright position. I'm managing this speed all the way down. Glide slope running away from me. But once again, I think this is more of a sim issue than a piloting issue. Holding her level and allowing her to descend, eyes towards the end of the runway. Throttles to idle, which will disengage the auto throttle. Just holding the nose up slightly. Touch down. Nose wheel down. A little bit off center, but not a major problem. And now reverses engaged. Eighty knots and reverse idle. Throttles now to idle. And I think we'll take this off ramp coming up. Spoilers and flaps now retract. And now using my toe brakes. Conscious not to overheat the brakes. Gently does it. Landing lights off. And we'll now look for a parking here in Geneva. Watch us wing flex, it's just amazing. So realistic. Well, have you been flying the Phoenix Airbus A320? If not, do you intend to? It's a great aircraft. Let me know in the comments below. I hope that this tutorial has been of some assistance to those just starting out on their airliner journey. If you're looking for more help and assistance, then check out FS Academy's Jetliner, a modular training package based on the A320 for both PC and Xbox. Also check out two great channels, one from 320 Simpilot and the other from Into the Blue. These are excellent channels and featuring real-world A320 pilots. You can learn a lot from these guys and they're well worth a like and subscribe. Links to their channels in the notes below. In this set of tutorials we've only really covered the basics. The depth of system modeling in the Phoenix means there's a whole lot more available to you to make your flying experience even more enjoyable. A new era for this sim. As always, stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon and bye-bye for now.